Now, it's a crucial day in Islamabad ahead of the no trust vote. Roads leading to the National Assembly have been cordoned off. Security has also been beefed up and a red zone has been declared in the area. The Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan is facing a very big test of his political career. He's facing a vote of no confidence in the National Assembly and the vote will decide whether Imran Khan's government will continue to rule Pakistan or not. Imran Khan needs the magic number of 172 in the lower house, which has a total of 342 members. If he were to wish to foil the opposition's attempt to try and topple the government. However, at this point of time, as the numbers stack up, his chances of overcoming this vote of no confidence against him appear to be very slim. And now to give us more updates in terms of what's happening in Islamabad, we are joined in by my colleague Anas Malik, who's joining us live from Islamabad. Anas, bring us up to speed with what is happening right now in Islamabad. We are given to understand that there has been a call for a mobilization of youth by the Prime Minister and also security has been beefed up in the city of Islamabad. So give us a sense of what it's like in Islamabad at this point of time. Well, Islamabad is calm. Uh, this eerie silence starts there. There are lesser cars on the road. It's uh, the first of Ramadan. So uh, Pakistan, by and large, people here are fasting. Uh, the temperature here ex is expected to go up till 36 degrees Celsius. So it will be pretty hot of a day outside as well. And the same would be in the parliament that's behind me that's inside uh, the parliament and it will be pretty hot of a day over here as well we're in some hours from now uh, the Pakistani Prime Minister is to take that vote of uh, no confidence uh, just a short while back we saw the opposition MPs uh, leaving uh, the parliament lodges that is right in front of me if I get aside and I'll explain so uh, you can probably see that uh, the security arrangements that have been made over there uh, in order to ensure uh, that's the parliament lodges that you see and uh, the army of uh, policemen that you see in the blue uh, clad in their blue uniforms that's Islamabad police that's there and uh, they are uh, in utmost numbers more than 4,000 personnel have been deployed with their riot gears as well in order to ensure that uh, no untoward scenario or situation arises over here and that the process of the no confidence motion goes very smoothly. Just a short while back, we saw the opposition um, uh, MPs literally walking their way. Uh, in fact, as I talked to you, there are some government ministers who are uh, getting to the parliament uh, and you can probably see those cars with the flags right. as well. The long line of cars that are a way to enter uh, the, par the National Assembly premises as well uh, on the road across if you can probably see that as well if a cam camera person can show you uh, these are ministers with the flag uh, with the Pakistan flag uh, cars that's how uh, it's known that these are ministers that are there uh, so by and large two hours there's almost uh, two hours left for the vote that uh, to be taken against Imran Khan and uh, uh, just two hours ahead or so we're seeing that movement at the assembly has already started Saleh Absolutely indeed. Uh, Anas, do continue to stay on with us. Meanwhile, I'm told that we are also joined by Dr. Farid Malik, who's the ex-chairman of the Pakistan Science Foundation, is joining us live from Lahore. Dr. Malik, this, this of course is a very crucial test for Imran Khan in his political career as we speak. He is expected to take this no-confidence motion that's been brought against him in a few hours from now. How do you see this panning out? Well, uh, let me clarify one thing. The opposition has to show a strength of 172 members. This is not a vote of confidence. This is a vote of no confidence. Mm -hmm. And the, the onus is on the opposition to be able to present 172 members to vote on the motion. If the, that number, that tally is not complete, then the motion will fail and the prime minister will continue. Now, at this point of time, as, as things stand, um, you know, it's, it's difficult to predict as to who is going to be voting for the government, who will be voting to bring down the government. The MQMP, the ally of the PTI, with which Imran Khan had been running, his government has deserted him. Now, there are also murmurs that within his own ranks, Imran Khan may not get the vote of every single elected legislator. How do you see this? Uh, that is true, but this is not, uh, Imran Khan is not there to show his strength. Mm -hmm. The opposition has to has to have to has to prove the numbers. 
See, that is the, uh, the uh, today the opposition has to prove the numbers. And opposition has failed repeatedly to produce the numbers that they have claimed. Right. This has been ongoing, and there are several reasons for that. And, you know, if you want, I can dilate on some of them. You know, since 1977, the, the parliament of Pakistan has almost been irrelevant. Right. And, and people who have made it to the parliament have had very poor track record of service. There are serious corruption charges against them. There, there are serious investigations going on, like the, the proposed uh, prime minister, Shabazz Sharif, is facing very serious money laundering charges. His son is also facing money laundering charges. So the parliament has, has been ineffective or irrelevant for a very long period of time. And Imran Khan has tremendous support in the country. You know, the youth are behind him and, and the people who, who, who see a future for Pakistan are behind him. So uh, the, op the, the ball is in the opposition court and they have repeatedly failed. And there is an interesting uh, uh, point which is it's called about Zameer. Right. They're conscious waking up. It is not their conscious waking up. It is when their, their, their misdeeds are exposed, then a lot of people withdraw from voting. You know, Dr. So Malik, you've you made a very... Uh, very big point here. You've, you've said that the parliament in, in many ways is irrelevant. But the fact is, Pakistan yes. is a parliamentary democracy. Imran Khan is the elected prime minister. He's, of course, fighting for his political survival. Why do you say that the parliament in Pakistan is irrelevant? The, the 1973 constitution has 21 clauses covering fundamental human rights. Mm -hmm. Not one of them has ever been discussed or implemented. In, 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 ever since the constitution has been passed. This parliament after 1977 is composed of electables. It is, it's big business. See, people come to the parliament to, for their own personal needs, for their own personal glory, and their own personal empire building. That's why they're very serious charges. Imran Khan is an exception, you know. Even people who surround him are not clean. Mm -hmm. So Imran Khan is an exception. You know, ethical Imran Khan brings ethical politics to 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 through a parliament which does not know what ethics is. You know, so his ethical conduct is his strength, and the people of Pakistan support that. You know, he may not be that competent because of lack of experience, but he brings a lot of ethical strength right. to to the parliament, which the parliament does not have. There are probably very few people who have that kind of ethical standards or ethical strength that the Prime Minister Imran Khan has. See, right. so Parliament has been irrelevant for a very long time because these electables are a big nuisance in our uh, in our political system. And they jump from party to party, they're called lotas. See, it's called lotocracy. So they jump from Parliament to Parliament, from party to party, they get elected. They do nothing for the people of Pakistan. They no, only build their own it's, it's very interesting the way you've put it, that you say the parliament is irrelevant. You say that the parliamentarians are not clean. Perhaps members of Imran Khan's own party, you say, are not clean. But Imran Khan, you insist, is, is someone who has brought ethics to the politics in Pakistan. Uh, you know, I, I want to ask you this question. The fact is, Imran Khan cannot continue to be the prime minister unless he also has the support of the members of, of the parliament in Pakistan. Quite clearly right now, it appears that he may not have the numbers to tide over this motion of no confidence that's been brought against him. Yes, that is a possibility, but then he has several options. See, if he resigns, if, if he resigns with his party members and bloc, mm -hmm. then there'll be elections. Then there'll be elections in Pakistan. Right. I don't think Imran Khan will ever let these thugs who are facing serious money laundering charges and corruption charges mm -hmm. to take helm of the country. I don't think Imran Khan will let that happen. All right, very you interesting. Know? Do continue to stay on with us, Dr. Malik, because I, I want to play the report that my colleague, Anas Malik, has in fact sent us from Islamabad. He's been getting his ground reports. Let's listen in to what Anas Malik has got to say. Just a couple of hours crucial before the crucial vote takes place in the Pakistan Assembly. Behind me, you can see these member parliaments. They're walking uh, to the assembly from the parliament lodges. Uh, uh, it's not much of a walk, but uh, they've decided to walk from the parliament lodges to uh, the assembly in order to dispel uh, any uh, uh, hurdles that can possibly arise. Uh, we see the former uh, finance minister uh, 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 and uh, the former foreign minister and defense minister of Aja Asif, the former prime minister Shahid Takana Basi. Uh, we've got other member parliaments as well who are around. 
and uh, you can see that these are this is the gate to, this is the entrance to the parliament and uh, uh, these are the member parliaments that are right behind me who are at this point of time walking uh, literally walking their way from the parliament lodges to the national assembly there is increased security deployment that must be done around as well and as malik in Islamabad, pakistan for beyond world is one all right, so the members of the National Assembly are beginning to, of course, arrive at, at the Parliament House in Islamabad. And we will get to know as to what will be the fate of this Imran Khan-led government in a couple of hours from now. But Dr. Malik is still with us. Uh, Dr. Malik, if I can bring you in on this. You know, over the course of the last one week, ever since the Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan, you know, took out that piece of paper, he said that he has evidence of an international conspiracy to topple his government. Is this a case of an international conspiracy to topple him or do you think it's essentially the opposition that has ganged up against him and now they have the numbers on the floor of the house well see you have to understand uh, that uh, in uh, pakistan has repeatedly faced external uh, interference in its politics india has not india has been uh, has been lucky that they have not faced right. this pakistan has repeatedly repeatedly face this kind of intrusion, starting from Ayub Khan all the way down to Nawaz Sharif and all these people who come into power for their own personal or family or needs or to make their own empires. They have no agenda, no vision, no ideology. Their only ideology is to make money. So Pakistan has been repeatedly abused in this, and I'm sure it's being abused again. The signs are very clear. In the last 60 years, 74 mm -hmm. governments have been toppled with the help of our friends in the United States and 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 they continue to uh, exert influence and uh, and and I don't understand actually, actually what is what is very strange in all this is that the person who's leading all this movement is Asif Ali Zardari and he is putting Shabazz Sharif to be the prime minister he's putting his son to be the chief minister of Punjab and you know what is what is he gaining what is his game I think he's, he's, he's put up the Pakistan Muslim League uh, up to shame. And he will eventually, when the dust settles down, it's my personal professional opinion that once the dust settle down, there will be only two political players left in the Pakistani arena. One will be Imran Khan and the other would be his son, uh, Bilawal Bhutto Zardari. Muslim League will, will, will bite the dust because they are being exposed. See, the little bit support they had, they're going to lose that. It was the Punjabi party. And the 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 temper the the temper are very high in Punjab because they have been exposed. They have been exposed financially. They have been exposed with their links, and and their leader is sitting in London meeting all kind of people. People know that now. So I think Asif Zardari has played a very smart one, and he has cornered the Muslim League. And so you know it's like uh, the, the hunting the bird with uh, well, killing the bird with uh, two birds with one stone. I think he has done that. This has been a very smart move from Asif Ali Zardari. And he, he, he gains to get the most from all this. You this know, is my I'll personal talk opinion. a little bit about, you know, what Asif Ali Zardari's game plan could be and how he may actually benefit out of, you know, all this political turmoil that is unfolding. But more important than that, the question that I want to ask you is, because of the allegation that is being made that the United States is trying to meddle within Pakistani politics and could be behind the conspiracy to bring down the government, do you think, how, how do you think that will impact the Pakistani equation with the United States? Well, see, Pakistanis know that. And, and it has always been a, a love and hate relationship. And I think uh, uh, that has to change, especially after the Afghan uh, uh, withdrawal or, of, of the U.S. forces. I think this love and hate relationship has to now change. Uh, and a relationship of two sovereign nations has to emerge. Pakistan has serious uh, financial issues. Mm -hmm. There's the that debt issue that Pakistan faces. For that, Pakistan relies on the on the USA. And I believe that now, with leaders like Imran Khan, who who insist on an ethical conduct, uh, independent foreign policy, which is the first time after Dulfakar Ali Bhutto, uh, Imran Khan has emerged with the independent foreign approach. He may not be as astute or as smart or as experienced as Dulfakar Ali Bhutto was. But he is, he's, you know, he's raised all the right uh, noises. He's, he's, he's on track. People are behind him. People trust him. People love him. 
they know that he's surrounded by a lot of people uh, who are not upright and honest and they've brought bad name to him and to the Pakistani democracy, but people still believe in him. And they believe, so the relationship with the United States would be now more like two sovereign nations, you know, not uh, somebody whose arms can be twisted. See, now Imran Khan is a person who, whose arms cannot be twisted because of his ethical conduct. And very few people in the Pakistani parliament have that kind of ethical levels and their arms are easily twisted. Their Zameer goes up and down all the time because there are so many skeletons that they have that it's very easy to twist their arm. Now, Imran Khan is a person who has no skeletons, so his arms cannot be twisted either by the establishment within the country or establishment outside the country. Very interesting that, that you, you say this because quite clearly, despite the ethics that you say that Imran Khan brings to the table as the Pakistani Prime Minister, fact is, is it appears that he's been outmaneuvered politically. Um, you know, I also want to dwell a bit upon this game plan that you said of who will gain out of bringing down this government. You say that the person who will gain will be Asif Ali Zardari, but if we were to you know, make sense of what the opposition has been saying in Pakistan, it appears that Shahbaz Sharif is, is the front runner who's being propped up by this joint opposition to possibly take over as the next prime minister. So how is it that Asif Ali Zardari gains? Well, see, uh, uh, Shabash Shrib is a very desperate person because there are very serious charges of uh, money laundering against him. The case is almost ready. He has no defense. He has been dodging the court here in Lahore. So Asif Ali Zardari took advantage of that he has put, he, if, even if Shabazz Sharif comes as a prime minister, there's not much he can do, especially if Punjab is in the, in the control of, of, of Parvez Ali as chief minister. That's all the election going on. Then uh, Shabazz Sharif will not be able to do much. He'll bring bad name to himself and to his party because of the prevailing economic situations. They have no game plan. They don't know what to do. And in a few months' time, elections around the corner. So right. he has really played very well that he has put up Shabazz Sharif to fail. You know, and he will fail. There is no reason. And you know, yesterday I write articles also in the newspaper, mm -hmm. and there was a there was a heading which said that Shabazz Sharif is going to burn the the night oil to produce a game plan to bring the the Mengai the uh, down. See, so I, I'm going to write an article. Uh, he, will he be burning the midnight oil or will he be stealing the midnight oil? Right. Because that's what they do. They specialize in stealing. PMLN is a party which specializes in stealing, in making money. That is their forte, you know. And wow. so they have no game plan. And, and he set up himself, he set himself to failure. And Shabazz, I don't understand that the PMLN is, was the most, it was the most uh, popular party after PTI. They could have waited another year. The, 2023 is an election year. Why have all this turmoil? All this, you know, it doesn't make any sense for PMLN. Because Shabazz Sheep is a very desperate person, because he's, he's facing conviction. And if any of the PMLN thugs is convicted, then PMLN will fall like a house of cards because they're holding together to protect their corruption. And Shabazz Shib is very close to conviction. So if today the motion fails against Imran Khan, then Shabazz Shib will be behind bars for sure, you know, because the cases against him are very strong. Okay. So Shabazz Shib is fighting for his life. Either Absolutely. he becomes the prime minister of Pakistan and fails, so he's gained some time for himself, or he goes to jail, because he can't, cannot dodge the courts anymore. You know, in fact, there is a petition against his his bail. Also, he's on bail from this court, and there's a case tomorrow being heard to cancel his bail application because he's taken bail on certain medical grounds. You know, and now Absolutely. he's contesting. Dr. Malik, the you know, it, the way you're you're describing it, you know, it appears to be extremely complicated. But what we are looking at right now is, you know or as to what is going to happen in the next few hours, which, of course, is the vote of no confidence that has been brought against the Imran Khan government. It'll be very interesting to see as to how that will, of course, play out in the National Assembly in Pakistan. These could be the last few hours of Imran Khan as the prime minister in the country. And at this point of time, in, in terms of how the lawmakers have been stacked up, it appears that he may not have the numbers to, in fact, win. Thank you very much indeed, Dr. Malik, for joining us and getting us all those updates and insights in terms of how all of this may play out in Pakistani politics. Now, just ahead of the crucial vote in the National Assembly, the former Pakistani Prime Minister Shahid Khan Abbasi spoke with Fionn about what course of action will be taken and what is likely to happen if the vote were to be, get, were to be disrupted due to unruly behaviour within the House of the Parliament. Listen in to what he had to say. 
strategy is very simple. There's a vote today. 342 people are eligible to vote. We'll go in the house. The speaker will ask for voting. The people in favor of the motion will go to one direction. The people against the motion will go to the other direction. That's it. But if there's, uh, there are plans that you heard that they are to disrupt the proceedings as well, what is the government's strategy then? How can they disrupt the proceedings? This is the job of the speaker. It's a, it's a voting session. There's no debate, there's nothing. It's the job of the speaker to keep the house in order. We've previously seen that uh, these delay tactics have been used in order to disrupt the debate as well. What if the same is implied today then? Well, the speaker is responsible. But the voting will take place. It's a constitutional requirement. Today is the last day of voting. The speaker does not uh, hold the voting for any reason today. He's liable for prosecution under the Constitution. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.